service broadcasting in Britain was first established in 1922 under the name British Broadcasting Company Limited, or BBC for short. The system was set up to provide programming for everyone within the UK and was funded by a licence fee payable by anyone with a wireless receiver. Under the management of Lord John Reith, who went on to become the organisation's first Director General in 1927, these early years were fundamental in shaping the ethos and principles of public service broadcasting in ways that are still evident today. However, before we go any further, we first need to take a step back and look at the historical context that led to this. Industrialisation in the 1880s was a movement that brought with it a growing working class population with substantially higher wages and more leisure time, resulting in an expanding new marketplace for mass media. Along with this, the 1870s Education Act had established compulsory and free education, leading to increased literacy levels and for the first time in history, a mass reading public in Britain. Reith believed that the rise of mass culture shouldn't be ignored or feared, but rather it should be improved. The high culture that existed in the theatres and concert halls around the country, once only accessible to a select few, could be made available to everyone through broadcasting, regardless of social or economic class. Another important driving force behind public service broadcasting was the recent establishment of universal suffrage. In Britain, women weren't allowed to vote in parliamentary elections until 1918, and even then they were only allowed to vote if they met certain requirements in regards to age and property rights. It wasn't until 1928 that there was full equality between men and women in regards to the right to vote. However, universal suffrage also brought with it a concern within the social elite around how this new growing electorate would be adequately informed in order to make democratic decisions. And again, we saw the answer to this problem in broadcasting, by exposing ordinary people to the affairs of government, giving them the resources to make informed political decisions. So it was Reith's vision that public service broadcasting would bring the art galleries and political establishments into people's living rooms. It would be an equalising force that would serve to eradicate class divisions within British society and encourage higher levels of social integration by elevating the tastes of the working classes. He believed that broadcasting should introduce people to new and unfamiliar things, to art, literature, ideas, music or viewpoints that they wouldn't have necessarily have come across in their everyday lives. This pretty much encompasses Reef's overall attitude that most people do not know what they want, as to want something, they have to first know it exists. In this regard, he strongly advocated that broadcasting should lead public taste, rather than just pander to it. As he stated in 1925, he who prides himself on giving what he thinks the public wants is often creating a fictitious demand for lower standards which he himself will then satisfy. Reith summarised the purpose of public service broadcasting in three words, inform, educate and entertain. And this is something that continues to be part of the BBC's mission statement today.